Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, July 22nd, 2011. In major worldwide news, before we get to reinsurance news, the heat wave in the U.S. continues. The temperature here in the New York area is going to be 105 degrees today on the thermometer. That's Fahrenheit. The heat index uh, might be as high as 115. And it's going to stay like this through the weekend, from what we understand. Uh, what I'm being told Monday is going to be a, a day when the temperature will top out at only 85 degrees. So that will be uh, like winter time. In Washington, D.C., where it's right now 100 degrees anyway, early in the morning, and it's going to get much hotter there today as well, uh, a deal might have been struck between the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, and President Obama. Uh, the deal supposedly will include some $3 trillion in spending cuts over the next 10 years, and will, it will see some revisions to the Internal Revenue uh, Tax Code, which will result in the closing of loopholes. It will also require some fairly substantial cuts in Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. The Democrats on Mr. Obama's left are very upset about the uh, details of the deal, which are beginning to circulate. Republicans are very upset because Speaker Boehner has uh, agreed to raise the debt uh, ceiling at all without receiving uh, gigantic uh, tax decreases. So the country lurches forward. They're expecting to have a vote sometime next week, so we'll see. Meanwhile, in Europe, uh, an agreement at the uh, EU uh, heads of state level, actually, it was just not the financial ministers, have come to agree that certain selective defaults of some of the Greek debt will be permitted. It's been determined that uh, some parts of the uh, debt can, in fact, be defaulted upon, and the commercial sector can cover that. The European governments, however, will cover the main part of the Greek debt, so that crisis may finally have been averted. Well. Let's go to our main news. Arthur J. Gallagher is on the move again in London. They're in talks to buy London market broker Oxygen. Oxygen, you might remember, was uh, launched uh, approximately five years ago with great fanfare. It was a new way to do business. It was uh, led by uh, Nigel Barton, who is still involved with the company, a well-known London broker. If this deal is successful, it'll be the second big buy of the year for Gallagher. They bought Heath Lambert back in May for just under 100 million pounds. Uh, Oxygen has had dealings before with Gallagher. In fact, in uh, 2008, they sold uh, their MGA arm, Oxygen Insurance Managers, OIM, with Sean Fisher to Gallagher. It was reported by Insurance Times last month that Oxygen, which reported an 86.5% profit drop in 2010, uh, made 95,000 pounds. The broker attributed the sharp decline at the time to the untimely death of Sean Hicks, the head of Oxygen Leeds-based Corporate Risks Department, in 2009 and the subsequent defection of some of his former colleagues the next year. Neither party was available for comment. Lloyd's insurer Beasley posted a half-year loss of $24 million. Its combined ratio jumped up to 108% because of large loss experience. Reinsurance rates on international loss-affected accounts have jumped up by about 60%. The firm has kept its cat loss estimate for this year's Australia, New Zealand, and Japan disaster steady at 154 million U.S. It predicted that the recent American tornadoes would cost the company $29 million on market losses of up to $25 billion. These losses pushed their underwriting loss out to 108% compared to 90% for the first half of 2010. Andrew Horton, the CEO, said the firm still expected to turn an underwriting profit for the full year, provided there were no major disasters during the rest of the year. During the same period last year, Beasley saw $115 million profit. So, I mean, obviously, everybody's got their eyes on the uh, summer hurricane season in the U.S. Here's an interesting story. Uh, BMS, uh, Ballantyne, McKean, and Sullivan, entered into a share buyback agreement with its only external shareholder, AHJ Holdings. This deal will now leave BMS entirely in the hands of its current and former employees. The deal is going to take place over the next two years. Uh, BMS uh, secured a 10 million pound three-year revolving credit facility from Lloyds Bank in order to make the deal. Chubb here in New Jersey, about 25 miles up the road, has posted a net profit of $928 million during the first half of 2010 despite taking a close to $600 million pre-tax hit from cat claims over the same period. 
The $928 million represents a decrease of only $54 million compared with the prior year period. The usual litany of cats, uh, floods in Australia, earthquakes in New Zealand and Japan, and tornadoes in the U.S. are to blame. Trump's combined ratio reached 94.3% for the first half of this year. Boy, who, who wouldn't want to have that? That's an increase of 2.3 percentage points over the same stretch in 2010. So that would mean that in 2010, first half, they were at uh, 92.1. I'll tell you, that's a very well-run company. Well, in Austin, Texas, uh, soon-to-be presidential candidate Governor Rick Perry announced the appointment of Eleanor Kitzman to become the new Texas Insurance Commissioner. Kitzman is an Austin resident. She's going to replace Mike Geeslin, who announced earlier this year he was not interested in serving another term as commissioner. Kitzman is the outgoing executive director of the South Carolina Budget Board. She's also a former director of the South Carolina Department of Insurance. And uh, Typhoon Ma'an in Japan is weakening. It's heading out now east into the Pacific after striking uh, Japan yesterday, and it caused less than a quarter of a billion dollars in insured damage. According to Guy Carpenter, Ma'an struck the coast of Japan yesterday with winds topping 100 miles an hour, and it brought heavy rains. The Japan Times said that the storm struck 23 miles east of the key peninsula at about 1 p.m. It's a very slow-moving storm, and it dumped an awful lot of rain. Air and rail services were disrupted. A hundred, uh, hundreds and hundreds of flights were canceled. Equicat estimated that the insured losses will be under $250 million. In China, 41 people died in uh, a, a fire that occurred on an overnight sleeper bus uh, that was heavily overloaded when the bus caught fire in Xinjiang City in Henan Province earlier this morning. 47 people were on board the 35-seat bus when they caught fire on the beijing zuhai Expressway. The double-decker sleeper bus was on its way from the city of uh, Weihai in Shandong Province to the capital of Hunan, Shangsha. I'll tell you, by the time we're done with all this, we will have learned all these names because these are cities that are going to have, uh, if they don't already, several million inhabitants. Well, um, when it's hot, hot, hot here in the northeastern U.S., that means that there's winter in the southern part of the globe. This is hard to believe, but true. Chilean officials have declared a catastrophe in eight cities this morning after heavy snow blanketed communities and blocked roads in what the nation's government is calling a white earthquake. It has snowed more than ever, said the mayor of the city of Curacutan. This is an anomaly. It worries us because the meteorologists are now telling us that new snowstorms are coming. The federal interior minister called the situation a white earthquake, and he asked the country's military officials to help citizens in some of the hardest hit areas in the country's central Arcunia region. Livestock is most heavily affected. Thousands of uh, steer and cows are out and can't be rescued. Have a good weekend. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on Monday.